Up till now, we've learned the power rule, which means that you can bring that exponent out in front and subtract one from the exponent, and it's way faster than using the definition of the derivative. The next rule that we look at is the sum and difference rule, which isn't a very difficult rule at all. In fact, you might not even feel like it's a rule after you see it. All it means is when you're adding a bunch of things that you could do the derivative of separately, you could just do that. When I want to find the derivative of x squared plus 3x plus 7, I say, well, what's the derivative of x squared? Bring the 2 out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. What's the derivative of 3x? Bring the 1 out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. And what's the derivative of 7? I mean, you wouldn't have to write plus 0 there, but you could. The derivative of negative 7 is 0. So we can just find the derivative of each thing separately. Whoops. And so our sum and difference rule is just that. We can just find each of these things separately. And in this notation here, it says, if you've got one function plus or minus another function, then the derivative is the derivative of the first function plus or minus the derivative of the second function. So a lot of these are fairly straightforward. Again, this one is already each of the terms are in a form that you know how to take the derivative of. So we can find the derivative, bring the 2 out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. Derivative of 3x is 3, and the derivative of negative 4 is just 4. One of the things I try to do in my examples is I try to find from different textbooks all the different kinds of notation that you can see for a function. So this is a, a notation probably you haven't seen much of before. You've got the function f takes every x value and maps it to that. It basically means the same thing as f of x equals. It's just another notation. So when I want to find the derivative of this one, same thing. A little bit harder, now that 2 thirds would come out in front become a 6, subtract 1 from the exponent. The 1 fifth would come out in front, times 10 is 2, subtract 1 from the exponent. And you can leave your answer like this. You'll find that your textbook likes to write the answers with positive exponents. So your textbook might have the answer looking like this, and sometimes it might change it to radicals. Now, in some cases, in this one, x squared minus 4, it currently isn't in a form where we're adding and subtracting different things that we know how to do. Okay? Up till now, the only thing we know how to do is the power rule. So if we have anything else, we either have to use our definition of the derivative and figure it out, or figure out a way we can rearrange this so that it fits. Well, squared means multiplied by itself. If I do distribute everything here, I will change it into a form that I can do. And if you can change it in the form that you can do, now each of the derivatives, and it says find dy dx, so we'll use the right notation that they're asking for, 4x cubed minus 16x. Now again, we might take the time to change the cube root to an x to the one-third. Right now, this is multiplying. Our rules so far are restricted to only when we have power laws and adding and subtracting. So in this situation, I would distribute this. Now, how do we multiply x to the one-third times x squared? 
We have to remember that we have exponent rules. When we're multiplying the same base, we can add the exponents. Remember that 2 is equal to 6 over 3. So if I have 1 third plus 6 over 3, I'm going to get x to the 7 thirds. And 1 third plus 3 over 3 will be x to the 4 thirds. Now that I've set it up in a form where I have only the power rule and only adding and subtracting, I can easily do the derivative. 7 third comes out in front. That'll become 14. Subtract 1 from the exponent. The 4 thirds comes out in front. That'll just become 4. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Like I said before, we're going to get really, really good at subtracting 1. And sometimes we have situations where we have to undo mathematics that we normally don't have to undo, right? In math, you're often asked to add fractions. Not very often are you asked to undo the fact that you might have added fractions earlier. But that's what the case here. If someone had added two fractions together to get this, can you see that they might have added this together, because that would be a common denominator. And then you would just have to add your numerators. Now, if I were adding those together, before this, I might have had a simplified form. It might have been like 2 thirds x to the 6th, plus here, this would just be 3 over x. Now, the first term is something we could do the power rule for. The second term, the way that it's written right now, I can't do the power rule for, because I have an x in my denominator. But I could change this even further. By using my negative exponent rule and bringing that x to my numerator. Now I can bring everything out in front. Now I can do my derivative, dy dx. Bring the 6 out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. Bring the negative 1 out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. And we found our derivative. So in a sense here, we had to unadd fractions to get it into a form that we need to know how to do. Now later on, we're going to learn rules for when you're dividing. There's a shortcut for when you're dividing. And later today, we're going to learn the shortcut for when you multiply. But right now, we're just using our algebra skills to try and manipulate whatever we have into the power rule or the sum and difference rule, where we're adding and subtracting different functions. So if you had the same thing from before and you had to work backwards, if that's the derivative, my first term? Well, if I'm always subtracting 1 from the exponent, this would have to be an x to the 4. What number would have to be in front to get us a 20? There would have to be a 5 in front. And to just have a 5 by itself means originally you would have had a 5x.